It doesn't look like I can pick up where I left off. So, I guess I have to start over since I got interrupted. Um, this is the email that was sent to me. Um, and the question was, does God love Satan? And since we are to love our enemies, does that mean we should love Satan? The whole first part of this answer, uh, I, I just totally dismiss. Um, <laughs> uh, because it, it's a setup for making us think the way they want us to think instead of just accepting um, the, the Bible the way the Bible is um, uh, this is what it says one of the most precious statements in all of scripture is God is love 1 John 4 and 8 but in, limited, in our limited human understanding we sometimes believe this means that God loves everyone and everything all the time this is not so see I would stop there in that answer and say that is so God loves everyone and everything all the time God is love in him there is no darkness at all so even when he decides to destroy the wicked it's an act of love when he punishes his righteous sons it pro it pleased him to bruise to crush Christ so it was it was not an act of hatred that that God crushed Christ it was love for us and it was a necessary uh, event that had to take place in order to save us uh, without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin the Bible is very specific in what it says uh, for a reason and it God doesn't have to answer to anyone he doesn't have to explain why he's going to why Satan's fate is sealed but if you study your Bible, you will understand why Satan's fate is sealed. It's not because he's Satan or because he's the devil or more wicked than anyone who's ever been. He's wicked. He chose to oppose God. When Peter chose uh, to, to um, say, oh, no, Lord, it's not going to happen to you. You're not going to be crucified. Jesus said, "You get behind me, Satan, you know, because you're an offense to me. So he was just as willing to kill Peter for if he had remained an offense to him as as God was ready to kill Moses when he didn't circumcise his son. Um, God is no respecter of person. Evil will kill you. Sin will bring you down. It doesn't matter who you are, be you angel named Lucifer or Jonathan me or you or anyone else God is no respect to a person he loves his son Jesus Jesus could have done wrong he had the ability to sin but he chose righteousness Lucifer had the ability to sin and he chose unrighteousness because he chose unrighteousness he made himself the adversary of God God uses him as his adversary and so everyone, Lucifer is the example of what our fate is. You know, so the, the hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. All, the, all of his messengers, those that deliver Satan's message, uh, will be destroyed with Satan. All those that are part of his kingdom will be destroyed with Satan. Be they angel, be they person, human being, doesn't matter. They will all suffer the same fate. Um, it goes into detail that they're tormented day and night uh, in, in the lake of fire. That's just detail. It, um, it doesn't say God hates Lucifer. God hates sin. And sin is what is going to cause us to be killed. Uh, does God love Lucifer? Yes. Just like he loves you. Just like he loves me. Just like he loves Jesus. But we have free will. And if we don't choose God with our free will, he will destroy us. That's all there is to it. It's really not that complicated. We want to uh, blame the devil for everything we do. Oh, sin exists because of the devil. No, sin exists because if it hadn't been the devil, it would have been somebody else. 
sin was supposed to only exist as a concept the concept of sin is the opposite of anything God said do if God tells you tells you not to eat pork and you eat pork you become Lucifer and the adversary of God if God tells you to keep the Sabbath day and you break the Sabbath day then you oppose God and you break the Sabbath day but Jesus died for our sins so if Lucifer was willing to repent I believe God would forgive him but we know he's not going to he has no intention of doing so and not only does he have no intention of doing so he takes pleasure in making other people decide you know what I don't want to serve God either you know and 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 how does he do that he just keeps presenting choices and 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 he just keeps presenting choices and we keep choosing the wrong thing until we become just like him you know what Lucifer you're absolutely right this power thing feels good but Lucifer didn't make us do that that's the evil in us that that makes us choose evil over righteousness and so it's no different there's zero difference between us choosing unrighteousness and Lucifer choosing unrighteousness Jesus chose righteousness so he gave us the ability to choose righteousness why did, how did he give us the ability to choose righteousness because the first time we sinned we died we died dead men can't choose so he gave us life he gave every man life G Lucifer has life he did not die when he sinned he has life God keeps him alive and and Lucifer continues to believe he is going to win he's going to oppose God and win and he's a liar and he's going to die and be destroyed and every other sinner who thinks they can continue to sin and 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 oh well God is love he's never gonna yeah well, I, I, the, the 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 fact that you have no desire to stop sinning says that you're not a child of God if you have a desire to stop sinning you're a child of God whether you stop sinning or not you're a child of God why because you have a desire to stop Lucifer has no desire to stop that's the separating line if you have no desire to stop the more you desire to stop you will stop he that loves God you know is in the the process and Jesus is saving us he's cleansing us every day he's cleansing us why because we want to be cleansed we desire cleansing Lucifer does not he doesn't does not desire cleansing but if he did God would forgive him but he's not going to his fate is sealed it's written so we know that his fate is sealed but his fate is sealed by his will not God's will God's will is that every man would come to repentance that's God's will God's will is that every angel would have come to repentance but they won't they have no they don't they don't they don't want to they won't that's the difference don't add anything to it don't take anything from it stop trying to uh, blame the devil and other people for what we do I'm responsible for me and Lucifer is responsible for Lucifer and only Lucifer because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God every single person has sinned and come short of the glory of God it's our own sin that God is going to destroy us for and so Jesus died for sin so now it's not sin it's not sin anymore that destroys us it's the desire to continue if we desire to continue then we are not God's children I don't want to keep continuing here I don't want to live in this world I don't want to live this life I don't want to have the same lust of the flesh lust of the eye and the pride of this life I don't want this I want Jesus to be king here I want to see no more thorns on on the trees and I don't want to be afraid of bears and lions and tigers I want all fear taken away and nothing but love left behind that's the kingdom that God created in the beginning and that's where he wants to bring us to if you desire that kind of thing you're a child of God if you don't desire that kind of thing then you're not a child of God you're a tear I can't tell who the wheat and the tears are I can't I know I'm wheat I can only speak for me when I'm around other wheat I, I feel comfortable so if you don't love me 
you're a tear. Why? Because I know I'm I'm weak. So if if everyone that goes to church and says they want to be a child of God is a child of God, because it's the desire to be a child of God that is required. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So if you are a child of God, you should be trying to keep the Ten Commandments. If you don't keep them, you're still covered under the blood of Jesus. You don't have the law of sin and death hanging over your head anymore. So you don't have that. So now you don't. But the love of God is what's supposed to draw you to righteousness. The more you love God, the more you're drawn to righteousness. And that's what we do. We are drawn to righteousness. If you reject the chastening of the Lord, if you reject wisdom and teaching, if you reject the righteousness of God, you're a tear. That's the reason why you reject it. They came out from among us because they were not of us. If they were of us, they would have continued with us. Strongholds. The devil has strongholds in all of our lives. And those strongholds are just that. Strongholds. But it's a, it's not a hold that's so strong that Jesus can't break it. Jesus can break those things. And we have to teach that. We have to believe that. And we have to work towards it every day until the day we die. And we die as children of God because we're working towards that goal. That's the difference. We're working towards the goal of righteousness. Unrighteous people and wicked people are not. This They want you to accept them for how they are. I'm a homosexual. I was born homosexual. I'm going to die homosexual. You're not a child of God. I was... Uh, you know, I, I can't stop this sin. You know, this is just the way God made me. No. This is the way you made you. Born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Decision after decision after decision of choosing evil, choosing evil, choosing evil has made you think that evil is right. All someone has to do is keep telling you it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. And and if you really want to be right, you're, sooner or later you're going to say, okay, it's wrong. But how do I stop? That's the first step. How do I stop? The fact that you want to stop is the beginning of wisdom. The fact that you acknowledge that there's a God, that's, that's your strength. That's the source of the power to overcome all wickedness. Does God love Satan? Yes, he does. Does that mean he's not going to destroy him? No. God will destroy wickedness. God is going to destroy his enemies. If, if, if I am his enemy, I'm going to be destroyed. If Satan is his enemy, Satan is going to be destroyed. But God does not hate us. He does not hate us. He hates sin. He hates unrighteousness. He hates the fact that we don't want to be righteous. If we don't want to be... Satan has no desire to be righteous. And that's what's going to destroy him. Not the love of God. God loves him. God loves you. God loves me. God loves everyone. God loves the, the angels. He loves them. But that same love, that same righteousness is holiness. And, and in him is no darkness at all. And the, the darkness is going to be dispelled by the light. So it's not a cut and dry. If it's a cut and dry answer, does God love Satan? The answer is yes. God loves him. You know, he loves his enemy. Why? Because he tells us to love our enemies. So why would he tell us to do something he doesn't do? He loves his enemies. We need to love our enemies. Does that mean we need to, that we shouldn't destroy them? No. The children of Israel killed their enemies. Your enemies, you can still love them and kill them. It happens all the time. You know, the Civil War was, was brothers fighting against each other for on a, an opposing view. And America is born. You know, so... Love can kill.